Hello and welcome to our brand new video series where we talk about everything related to microscopy. My name is Philip. And my name is Chiara. We will be the hosts of this video series and today we have our guest Reto Wittland, Commercial Director of Digital Microscopy and Multic. Hi Reto, how are you? Hello, how are you? Nice to see you all. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us today Reto. Ah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. We just wanted to ask you and talk with you about digital digitalization and the digital field. Because obviously back in the day when I used to go to class, it used to be very much paper-based or blackboard-based. It was about drawing in biology classes. And with the technologies advancing, we obviously want to be accommodating and see how our products can be useful in the in schools and universities alike. Uh, that's right. I think um, the digitalization process has also entered the science classroom. And uh, whereas even when I was a student, uh, I had to look down the microscope, which was usually monocular with one eye, and then focus with the other eye on my pencil and a piece of paper, and then try to draw an outline by merging the two images in my brain, and then having that, uh, drawing that outline of a cell, or, and then afterwards labeling it. So, I mean, um, apart from having headaches, uh, and if you're not good at art, so unfortunately you're not going to be very good in science, so nowadays with digitalization in classrooms, be it with, uh, for, for example, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and now everything is wireless, uh, bring your own device, the B BYOD kind of uh, system in schools, where either kids, yeah, either kids receive a device uh, they can use in multiple uh, uh, classes, mathematics, languages, sciences, or they bring their own, because they always have a device with them, and then they can connect it to, to various things. So this is also now included in, in microscopy, uh, where I can say that I've been with the company for 20 years, and I think 20 or 19 years ago, we were the first ones to introduce digital microscopy into the science classroom. So bringing it down from university or something that's very expensive and only available for a few people, down to what is now you can find in kindergartens and upwards. So basically you unlock unlock the microscope, make it more fun, yes. Of course, and affordable as well for teaching environments that have limited budgets as well. Um, the limitation is not just the budget, it's also the time. Um, I've been able to talk to a lot of um, teachers in uh, different countries uh, using different curriculums and um, they've always hated using microscopes because, for example, if you have a classroom full of uh, 25 students, you need to set up 25 individual microscopes, connect them all. Usually, if you're lucky, you have an illumination on your, on your uh, microscope. If not, you have a little mirror that you need to adjust. And then you have to make sure that all the kids are looking at the, the place in the slide that you're supposed to be doing. So with a school not you know, a normal school lesson being about 40 to 45 minutes, that means you know a lot of time is wasted trying to make sure everyone is looking at the right image. And um, if you're not, then that student would get a bet, uh, bad grade um, in, in any kind of evaluation afterwards, which will reflect poorly upon the teacher. So they've always hated using using microscopes. So now with the digital system, you take the image out of the microscope and you make it available, for example, on a, on a tablet being live. So what does that mean? That means the students, maybe four students can sit around one microscope and they all can learn because they can all see what's going on. You know, if, if the slide is being moved, you can change magnification. And for the teacher, it means that they can immediately see when a, a student or a group of students is falling behind. So then they can intervene. So it makes it more reassuring for both the students because they know that they're learning the right thing and for the teachers because they know that they're teaching it properly so that later, you know, there's never an excuse if a, if a student is not really doing well or at least then they can intervene. Well, the software is really usable, like, like the environment that even, as you said, in the kindergarten, uh, people are using already digital microscopy. Did I get that right? As a, as a kid, you want to see disgusting things, right? So that's... That's really okay. interesting. So for example, if you have an old sandwich from last week and there's mold on it right now, so you want to see what that looks like under a microscope. And then you want to, if you can show that to the kids on a bigger screen, so you need a digital microscope, obviously, 
And then all the kids get excited and they get talking about how does this happen that when food goes bad, what happens to it? Why does it turn a yucky green color? That kind of thing. So you make it, you make it more interesting and make it way more interactive. And exactly, I think the interactive part is key, um, especially like with how technology is well integrated into our lives, is accommodating both parts, the scientific research or curiosity, let's call it, with the advances and comfort of technology. Well, yes, because everything, I think today's generation, they want the results in an instant, right? So. Whatever happens, either you want instant gratification or you want instant results. So you want to see, based on, on, on what you're doing and what you're experimenting with, you want to see exactly what happens if. And that result of what happens if you want immediately. So you can do that with uh, digital microscopy. So for example, uh, how big is a, how thick is a cell wall? Well, previously you wouldn't really know immediately because you would have to use micrometer eyepieces, you would have to understand about the different magnifications. That's really not, not necessarily uh, the science of biology, but what you, want, what you can do now with a digital system is basically use your mouse and you say you have your image, I want to know how thick is a cell wall, and then you drag your, your measurements across that wall and you get the result immediately. So immediately you learn. And with that, I think you keep the, you keep the kids more interested in, in exploring further on their own. So basically, you, you actually, from a, from a learning standpoint, you're also uh, facilitating or enabling kids to have, um, uh, you know, to satisfy their curiosity. And um, I really guess that the affordability went up in the last years, right? Because computer chip growth, like uh, the technology is really fast so like also live imaging and stuff has to have like 30 fps or sure i mean you want what's important in in uh digital microscopy are basically the following things one is obviously resolution so nowadays for us we are talking about live imaging so what you see on the computer screen or on your projector uh let's say needs to be in 4k resolution or even higher uh, and that needs to be live. We're not only talking about captured, and there always, there was, there's always this kind of uh, misunderstanding when we say that we have, let's say, a 12 megapixel live imaging um, uh, microscope camera or digital microscopes, and I say, well, 12 megapixels, my, 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 phone, uh, my camera at home can do 48 megapixels or even more. Yeah. But that's not the point, so you want to have it live so that you can see uh, um, movement let's say if if you're looking at a live image if you're looking or even in the higher classes if you're looking at uh, cell mobility or anything like that or if even if you're looking at pond water samples little daphnias when they're moving around so you need to see them clearly and not pixelated so that's one thing is the live resolution the other thing is color representation which is very very important because another interjection that many people have is why do i need to pay so much for a microscopy camera if I can go on Amazon and I can get very, very cheap uh, webcams or even uh, other kind of cheaper eyepiece microscope cameras uh, that are based on webcam technology. Well, the point is there is that um, you need to differentiate in the, in the colors and there's no reason why you cannot start that process in schools already. So later on, if you go into pathology, and if with your eyes you see that uh, a, a cell that is marked should be purple, okay, and you see it with your eyes, but then if you're looking at it on the screen, it's red, then you sort of miss the point when you're, when you're uh, you know, doing this interaction or when you're trying to capture the picture or even if you're trying to do some kind of di uh, diagnostics. So a microscope camera is not the same as a webcam and it really needs to, you need to be able to either automatically or manually make sure you have the same kind of color on your screen than it is than what you see on your uh, through your eyes when you're looking at the microscope in the traditional way so that's why i mean microscopy digital microscopy is not really just putting a camera somewhere in a microscope it's really the, the thought process behind it like what do you need how do you use it what do you need it for and what's the result Digital microscopy is about quantifying the image, is about learning from the image. And if the image is no good, then any kind of data you get from the image is also not going to be any good. And that sort of defeats the, the, whole, the whole process.
of course. Uh, what I'm thinking, obviously, we are discussing technologies, data, images. Uh, how do you feel that um, what tech softwares are supporting people that maybe don't feel as comfortable with technologies and are able to instead switch from a traditional microscope to a digital one now? Well, yes, I understand what you mean. And you see that with a lot of, um, let's say, maybe I'm going to offend a few people now, but older generation teachers that prefer the traditional way. Uh, so yes, they would be, let's say, more hesitant to adopt um, computer systems uh, in the classroom and they wouldn't know how to set it up and how to use it properly. But when um, part of the beauty at, at Motic is that we do our own software and we don't do the software blindly but um, it's an evolutionary process. So we go into the schools, we sit at the back of the classroom and we see how do the teachers teach. And then they can come back to us and say, oh, I, I would like to have um, uh, a, a method where I can start counting. So I just use the mouse on a screen and I count the different dots. And at the end of the day, I want it to show me how many, what is the average and all that kind of thing. So those kind of ideas, for us not being teachers would be very difficult to, to come up with. So we listen to the teachers, we go with them, and then uh, we incorporate, because it's our own software, we incorporate all those uh, ideas into, into our software solution. And yeah, I mean, that, that also gets the buy-in from the teachers because they become involved in the whole process. And uh, the other, one of the great benefits of that is that you have very good um, word of mouth. So that means that, you know, if uh, a school can say, oh, we have been part of this process about putting this new feature into that uh, software, they will also tell others and others will hear about that. So they also would like to contribute. So this, this whole involvement um, makes uh, the barrier of jumping into a digital microscopy system by Motic uh, a little bit more lower. So you, you reduce the kind of fear because it, they, are part, they are involved as well. Good, that's good. It's basically using technologies to bring us together instead of like separating us between teachers, students, older generation and younger generation, I think. Right, and you cannot run away from technology in the classroom, right? So in uh, you have interactive whiteboards, teacher, uh, kids are being given uh, tablets, you have Chromebooks everywhere, you have, you know, language classes. Uh, done uh, basically with textbooks now being online. You have the same thing with math classes, all the textbooks are online. So the science classroom should not be left out of this digitalization process. Yeah. So uh, then people, I mean, the students can more easily uh, sort of bond with, uh, with the microscope if it's no longer just a collection of lenses. That means that, you know, normally it's a very lonely process. You're sitting there with your eyes on in, inside the microscope trying to see an image. So you're not communicating with your, with your classmates, you're not sharing the same experience and you learn less. So with kind of interaction and with this, these different philosophies like flipping your classroom, you know, letting the students lead the class and letting them become involved in, uh, in decision making and the direction of a, of a class, then they become way more attached to what it is that they're learning. And something like that you cannot do with a normal kind of microscope. You can only do with a digitalization of, of the microscopy system, yeah. And with um, universities and schools being already sometimes digitalized, I, I don't, I'm not sure, like every school has a server for homeworks. Um, how does it look like in, in biology? Is there already like also some interactive thing where a whole classroom can like work together? Yeah, there's a lot of, of different systems, so you have many, many steps of interaction. Number one, very simple, microscope, digital device inside and, uh, and the screen, okay? So you work together with your classroom, you capture the image, and then you email it home or as a homework where you label it on your computer or you do it there. But if you want to interact more uh, with your other group mates or with other uh, classmates uh, and with the teacher, then we have something called Motic Net, which means that all of the digital microscopes are linked together in one virtual environment. So even though, even though you may still use the microscope, we will not go away from using eyepieces on a microscope because I think that's 
you always need to have this kind of counter check that what you're seeing on your screen is actually what you're seeing on your microscope because that's what a microscope is basically it's a magnification device through optics but um, then we we share this and we want to share it with the whole classroom so that means the teacher can see with MotiCnet, for example, what every single microscope is displaying and therefore they know exactly what every student is looking at. So are you looking at the right uh, structure in a cell? Are you looking at the right uh, uh, stage in a mitosis? You know, basically as a teacher you can then feel assured that, okay, they understand what I'm trying to teach them. And at the same time then I can very easily tell, uh, send them an image from my teacher's microscope to uh, the student's tablet and say, okay, I want you to find this one in your microscope, take a picture, label it, measure whatever you, it is you need to measure, and then send it back to my station. Okay, so that you can do. And then one thing that never changed is that 40 to 45 minute class time, right? So with it being a digital system, then you can get as much work and as much complexity into the 40 to 45 minutes as you as you can without overloading the work of the teacher because everything will be backed up i think that's incredible and i at least i would love i think philip as well to have the opportunity to see the system uh, live if possible sure i would be more than happy to show you um uh, and the setup here in our in our uh demo room or we can have a look at it and if when 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 COVID is uh, is over and we can more freely travel, uh, then I'm sure we can have this conversation inside real classrooms. We've already have um, several classrooms set up in in the United States. I think we're working on the sixth now, which uh, and the people there are very happy. And again, all the teachers that are using it, the feedback they have comes straight back to us, and then we incorporate it in the next version of the software. So whenever you get a software from Motic you will always get the next one for free and the next one for free. So it keeps evolving with you. So you don't have to, you don't have to pay licenses, let's put it this way. That sounds amazing. So you're up for another video, right? <laughs> of course, no problem. As you can see, I'm quite enthusiastic about it because I mean, yeah, it's great fun yeah. to, to integrate, you know, two different lives, digital and the, the conventional optical, if you can put it together and you can see that it actually has uh, a result by getting the students like oh, biology, oh, the microscope, so boring uh, to actually go and say, oh yeah, I can do this. Hey, did you see what happens when I measure this or when I put uh, distilled water onto this cell and see what happens and then you take a video. So that actually is, is, is very nice to see. Oh, on you go. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, <laughs> am I released? <laughs> okay, then I'm looking forward uh, to the next video and I think uh, our dear viewers of YouTube also. Um, don't forget to click the subscribe and the like button. Yeah, and also don't forget to check our other social media channels. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>